Hi, finishing your artwork by framing it is an important step. It adds value to your work, it protects your work, it shouldn't be underestimated. However, a watercolorist knows the disappointment of happening to frame their work under glass where the reflection gets in the way of the viewing pleasure. Also, if you've ever hauled your artwork out to art walks or maker markets, the weight of glass and the fragility of glass is disappointing. I can't tell you how many pieces of art I've seen blown over in the wind and smashing on the sidewalk during art walk. So let's look at some alternatives. Um, my name is Kim Fjordbotten and I have had the disappointment of shipping gifts in the mail that are framed in glass and having them arrived broken and finding out that the couriers don't uh, insure glass. So let's talk about framing artwork, especially watercolors, without having to use glass. Wouldn't it be great if we could just take a watercolor and frame it like an acrylic painting and pop it in one of those front load frames? Well, let's talk about how to glue that artwork onto a birch panel and then coat it with a material that will give it a protective coating to uh, keep it clean and keep it resistant to water. That's what you want the finish to do. The secret ingredient are the waxes. Here I have both Dorland's wax and Gamblin's wax. They both work really well. I prefer Gamblin because it is a no odor with the Gamsol as the solvent. You don't have any odor in your studio. These waxes um, really have the consistency of, um, I don't know, Crisco shortening, like they're not going to spill out. They're a nice thick paste. Um, here you see it scoops up and holds its shape. Traditionally, we sell these as mediums for oil painting. This way you can bulk up your oil paints. It uh, helps with the drying time a little faster. It also is a matter, not glossy product. So if you want to add impasto to your oil paints, this is the item for you. But wax also has a lot of protective qualities and preservative qualities. This medium, you can also mix dry pigments in it, dry metals. It's great for encaustics. Um, it's got a lot of versatility, but today we're going to use it for its waterproofing preservative qualities. Watercolors we're going to coat in wax and adhere to the wood panels. Having a clean surface to work on is extremely important. And one thing that's always handy in my studio is palette paper. You could also use um, newsprint or other sheets of paper, but I find the palette paper is nice, nice and glossy. You can always wipe it off and reuse it. So 50 sheets per pad is really handy. So let's put our watercolor down. And you're not gonna believe how easy this is. It, it, it's hardly even worth a video, but in the olden days, you would apply wax shoe polish in the same manner. So you just want to get it nicely loaded and it's not going to smear. See, I know you were afraid of that part the most, but this is as technical as it gets. So normally I would start in the top corner and work my way across the piece. You're, you see, it's not smearing at all. It's not darkening. It's not discoloring. It's not making the image cloudy. And you can feel when you've got a good coating because your cloth slips across the surface. If there's any drag or resistance, you know the paper is still grabbing the product. So just work from top to bottom, left to right. And I'm not sure if you can even see it. Can you? It's kind of a little bit glossier, but not a lot. So continue coating your whole piece. As I am working on my piece, I'm careful to hold it in the same position all the time. I don't want to smear wax onto this and then have this shift around and then I, I've got wax on the back of the paper I need to glue down later. That's not good. So when I'm done this piece, you can see it's all encapsulated. Um, before I put the next piece down, I'm going to just flip over to a new page. Nice, clean surface to do my second um, piece on. This deep rich watercolor was done with both um, Schmenke and Holbein watercolors. And I used uh, a dip pen with the watercolors to get the really, really fine details. So a little tip extra there. I know you think it's gonna smear, but it is not. I promise. There, so now both pieces are encapsulated in wax. 
And the secret is this is not just beeswax. It has a resin inside it, and it is the resin over time that's going to cure and harden. So you will be able to polish this clean in the future, and it will have a very durable surface to it. So wax and damar is a wonderful protective varnish. Yay! Let's attach it to a board. At this point that I don't really like the plain wood edge. I think it's going to look a little unfinished. So before I glue it down, I'm going to paint this in an attractive color that's going to enhance the piece. noticed in the deep blue that I mixed, I painted not only the edge, but also a little bit onto the front surface. And the other one, I just only painted the edge. This piece of paper is much larger. I'm sure I'm going to get a perfect bond and you won't see any of the front. This one, however, is just barely the right size. So if perchance I don't glue it perfectly, um, in the frame, that little bit is going to disguise my error. So let's get gluing. So I'm using acrylic gel. What's acrylic gel? Well, this is the basic ingredient that they mix all pigment in to make acrylic colors. Normally, this is the consistency that you would squeeze out of a tube. It has no pigment in it. It looks milky when it's wet, but it will dry clear. It's an ideal adhesive because it is flexible, non-cracking, non-yellowing, and it has a strong waterproof bond. Just going to scoop it out like that. And with a dry brush, no water, I'm just gonna smear it over the surface, making sure to get right to the edges. You wanna work quickly. This is a fast drying acrylic, so you don't have a lot of time. I'm using my Da Vinci Impasto brush because it moves gel beautifully. So there we go, nice and smooth. There's no lumps, bumps, or texture. And I'm careful to notice I did spill, so yay, turn over my page. And coat, coat it very quickly as well. Paying really close attention to the edges. And the middle, and all parts in between. This is if you see any stray hairs or dusts or bits, you want to uh, remove them at this point as well. There, nice. Gonna go back to this, bring this back on, and now place it perfectly. Normally I would never pre-cut it to the board ahead of time. And I'm not gonna sit here and hold it and hold it and try to place it. I'm gonna get it in place and then guess what? We now have a use for those heavy textbooks from art history. You can just pull one from on top. Oh, I know. How about those weights that somebody gave you for Christmas? Oh, there you go. Yay. Let that sit overnight and we'll come back and check it out. So this one, since my birch panel is so much smaller than my image, I'm going to set it on top and carefully kind of bend it to where I want the edge to be, like that. And that's going to help me with my placement. I think this is going to look better cropped anyway. A lot of this is kind of empty space, so let's zoom in on the beautiful little creature there. So I've got my divots where I'm going to place it. Here we are with our laminated piece of paper. 
Now, look how easy this is. No ruler required. Just use the edge of the board as your spot you cut against. Nice and tight and crisp. How sweet is that? Perfectly laminated, nice gold edge to the gold piece, and sweet little watercolor. So there you have it. Gel for gluing your work onto a panel, cold wax for encapsulating and protecting it. Now you just need to decide what kind of frame to put it in. Pop it into a front load frame, next presentation, or are you going to take it up a notch? So now watercolorists can actually put things in a traditional linen gold frame. It increases the size of your work, improves its presentation, you can probably charge more for it, plus now you can take it out to the art fairs, the art walks, makers markets, and ship it without it breaking. Plus. No glare to get in the way of the viewing pleasure. So have fun varnishing your watercolors. Thanks. Mm -hmm.